Welcome back to Market Day Report. I'm Tony St. James. As we get your Wednesday rolling, how about we look at how markets are trading in the overnight session? We'll start with the uh, corn market first, down a penny and three quarters on the December contract, 421 and a half, and the March contract down two overnight, 430 and a quarter, just a tick off the overnight low. For soybeans, May contract at 10.04, down four and three quarters. The deferreds were lower as well. I, I do want to throw in soy meal as, uh, again, unchanged on the Ds, a little higher on January, but March, May, and July lower. And soy oil, and Brian Hoops will help us understand why we're looking at soy oil from the overnight session in just a moment lower across the board let's go to chicago and wheat july contract 558 it was off four overnight hard red july 554 and a quarter down two and a half and spring wheat march contract 588 and a half penny and a half lower new york cotton futures overnight in the red down 18 on the march at 7109. Brian Hoops, Midwest Market Solutions. So, why would I stop and look at uh, soy oil from last night? Well, the answer is because we had a private flash sale this morning. So, 30,000 metric tons of soy oil uh, sold to South Korea. So, um, I put that out on Twitter this morning, and it was kind of a, a mixed emoji that we sent with it. Kind of happy that we saw some uh, export business, but yet sad from the standpoint, where's the corn sales and we haven't had any soybean sales. So that's a little disappointment. So, um, you know, we have big price appreciations, our biggest moves when we have a supply threatening situation. We don't have that in the United States, obviously. We don't have that in South America right now. We have really good growing conditions, so it's hard to get any upward mobility. Basis levels are tight, spreads are narrowing, all that is uh, internally very fundamentally supportive for the market, especially for corn at this time of year, where we can see, you know, the cash price for the farmers being paid a little bit higher, but to see major a price appreciation, you have to have some sort of a supply issue that is threatened. And until we do, I'm afraid we're going to languish here in corn and soybeans, and for that matter, for wheat as well. Um, crop rings that came out for Kansas on Monday afternoon, that's the second best in the last 10 years. It's hard to get a crop threat when you have that good of high ratings as the market goes into dormancy. So. It's good to see export business. It's it's great to talk, see basis levels tightening up. It helps the cash markets. But when you see the futures market, we really can't rally much. We just don't have that incentive for uh, a fund manager to step in and buy the March contract because they know that there's going to be big South American crops hitting the marketplace during the month of March. And there's also a little bit of a carry there to buy. They, they don't want to buy the front months because of the delivery period. So this is a time of year where it's really hard to build any upward momentum unless weather in South America turns really adverse. All right, Brian. Plus, we get in the morning a weekly export sales report from USDA. So we'll have the opportunity to talk about that tomorrow. But hang on. In a moment, we'll talk livestock futures. Market Day report continues in a moment. Last week, cash cattle developed, and we saw gains 2 to $5, both across the south and the north. What about this week? Well, asking prices are 192 to 194 that both in the south and north. We'll have to wait till later in the week. I know we're halfway through the week right now, but later in the week to see where we develop as far as cash cattle goes. But we can look at the live cattle market and how it settled yesterday, December, 95 higher, 188.47. February most active at 189.07, up a buck 15. For the feeders, now up 16.2% year to date. January contract gains another 245 to 259.30 and 262.70 on the August as we roll out halfway through 2025, and that gained $1.35 in the session yesterday. And hogs in mixed territory, December up a couple of pennies, 83 and a quarter. 
lower for February, April, and May, and June after hitting 103, settling 102.50, up seven. Let's bring back in Brian Hoops, Midwest Market Solutions. What are you watching? Yeah, well, you hit the nail on the head. Cash markets so far have been untraded. We're looking for that cash to develop sometime this week with asking prices at higher money. We saw the cash trade move higher last week, but the cutout really did not respond much. So, so with the cutouts down yesterday sharply, our packer margins are now about $70 in the head uh, per head in the red. And that negative margin is probably going to keep a lid on some of the cash movements. So they, they likely to slow some of their kill speeds unless get those pro product values to prop up a little bit. But I do think you're going to see higher cash trade. The futures right now looking a little bit mixed. December expected to gain against the other months uh, in early dealings because we are discount already to the cash markets. And if we would see that one to two dollars higher cash trade, which I think is more likely for the week than the 194, probably in that 191 to 192 range, December remains undervalued and should move higher. Um, we're also going to run into some overhead resistance on some of those deferred cattle contracts if we get back up near yesterday's highs or or uh, near the weekly highs. So there's a lot of things in play in here, but number one is where's that cash gonna trade is gonna occur and cut out, can the cutout values start to rebound and rebuild some of these lost margins? We had weekly hog weights released this morning. They were up slightly from last week, but have actually slipped below last year's level. So we had a lot of heavy cat hogs last year, over 290 pounds, and we're just underneath that this year. So they're still heavy, but it is a good trend that we're finally underneath last year's hog weights. All right, Brian, we'll see you later this afternoon on the radio side, okay. Rural Radio 147 for Commodity Wrap and back here in the morning. Uh, again, that's Brian Hoops, Midwest Market Solutions.